as you're gearing up to step back into your normal life, if you haven't already done that, um, I thought I'd just give you five little quick little triggers, just reminders that are so simple. But these are the five things that I personally did when I first got kicked out of my house. Uh, some of you know the story. My, I remember I was so depressed. I, know, I don't know if you've ever been to that place where you're like wondering why you're even around or whether you should be around. It was a pretty brutal time. Uh, but what turned me around was feeding my mind. What I mean by that is um, about a year earlier, I'd gone to this seminar by Jim Rohn. I know many of you have heard of Jim. I went to a seminar with 17, and in the seminar, he really talked about the importance of feeding your mind, and you've got to feed it because otherwise things come at you. And so I remember I, I, I took the little bit of change I had left in my pocket, and I got on a bus, and I drove, uh, they drove me anyway, on the bus for about, I don't know, it's about an hour away from where I was because I'd been to this place once before at this amazing bookstore. And I figured I'll go in there and I'll just read a bunch of books while I'm in there because they can't afford any. And then I picked up a book called The Magic of Believing by Claude M. Bristol. And in this book, it talked about training and conditioning your mind and how what goes in your mind becomes the experience of your life and how to do it. And I was so depressed. I didn't know what to do. And so I went and I'll never forget. I went back to this little laundry room and there was a mirror there. And the book said, you know, put your goals on the mirror. So you look through your own eyes into your goals and you see in your own eyes and you read those goals, do it with soap. And so I did it in the mirror. And then I made these little posters that said things like only a loser is depressed. Now that's not true. Uh, because, but I felt like I'm not a loser. And that was the leverage I had, right? I can't be depressed if the loser's are depressed. And so I, I just try to work on everything. But gradually, I started turning my life around. And I did five things. And I did them again, I got to tell you, and multiple times in my life when I hit really bad places, when I was told I had a tumor in my brain, and that, you know, I might die, you know, when I uh, buried all four of my fathers over the course of a year and a half, and my mother, those are rough times, they start to shift you. When 2008 happened and looked like everything was going under. And I went back and I reapplied them here at the beginning of the pandemic as well. So they're really simple. But first, of the five keys to transform your life, I don't care where you are, how great it is, if you can get to the next level, the first step is stand guard the door of your mind. And I got that from my teacher, Jim Rohn. I remember he came to me one day and I was really frustrated. And I was saying, you know, I'm just, I'm working so hard and nothing's really working and I don't understand it. And, and I was just, I was super frustrated. And remember, he came to me and he said, Tony, he said, listen to me. He said, think of, tell me who's, what are you reading? He said, tell me who you're talking to. He said, tell me who you're surrounding yourself with. And I said, well, I'm mostly isolated by myself. And I said, but I'm so frustrated. And he says, listen to me. He said, answer this question for me. He said, what happens in the world if, let's say, you know, your worst enemy comes by and drops sugar in your coffee? And I'm, I said, well, you don't have sweet coffee. He said, well, what if your best friend, even by accident, drops one drop of strychnine? What if it's your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, somebody you love, accidentally drops one drop of strychnine? I said, well, then you'd be dead. He goes, that's right. So remember, life is both sugar and strychnine, so watch your coffee. And what he really meant was stand guard at the door of your mind. Because today, we live in a world where the media, they're not bad people, they're good people, but they're companies. And they got to take care of their shareholders. And the only way they win is by getting your eyeballs. And the only way to get your eyeballs in a world where there's so much information is to startle you. The news is not designed to educate you or inform you. You know that. That's why it says water, drinking water may kill you. Film at 11. You know, anything that grabs you. And so we're living in a culture of so much fear. So if you're going to take your life back, you got to take and do a limited amount of that media and, and be able to pursue it, not let it pursue you. Today, most people, like in order to get your attention, we all know what they do. It's called clickbait. Let me create a headline that'll grab you. It doesn't matter if the content is even real news or not. A lot of times the headline isn't really what the whole story is, but it pulls you in. There's whole groups of people whose entire life is designing algorithms and language to make you stay online more so they can make more money, but it isn't necessarily to your advantage. So what Jim Rohn used to say to me is he said, Tony, this is your new daily practice, because this is what I really want to get to you guys here, is if you want to keep momentum, if you've joined me for those few days there, the five, six days or seven, I guess we did for the challenge, or you went immersion with me as well, the key is to get momentum and keep momentum. If you work your tail off to get momentum going and then you drop it, oh my God, you got to start all over again. And so the way you do that is you have a daily practice. All of the problems we face today are wicked. None of them submit to singular binary solutions. So rather than these diseases of despair being something over in the kind of humanitarian and social services space, and these wicked problems being over here in kind of the techno-utopian disruptor space, might we consider them 
flip sides of the same coin. And if we do, how on earth can we begin to solve these wicked problems? And interestingly, um, the simplest is to think uh, Roger Martin at the Rotman School of Business up in Canada uh, wrote a great book. If anybody hasn't read it, super encouraging. It's called The Opposable Mind. And his premise, after serving A.G. Lafley at Procter & Gamble, Martha Graham, uh, creatives and leaders and innovators across disciplines, realized that what these folks do that virtually or very few others are consistently able to pull off is that they are able to hold, creative, creatively hold, the tension between dynamic and opposing ideas. And that sounds really straightforward. That sounds like the fodder for gajillions of dollars of management consulting workshops and off-site retreats right? <laughs> to all get to our innovative place. Um, but reality is, is that's not a skill set. It's actually a state of mind. And that state of mind is actually tunable today. Now, anthropologists have a very specific term for this. They, 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 they classify cultures by whether those cultures are monophasic or polyphasic. And that's just a complex way of saying one channel of consciousness or many channels of consciousness. Right? And if you think back to most traditional societies, they are polyphasic. They recognize and validate dreams, premonitions, possessions, trances, visions, you name it. Epileptic seizures, they're all like, well, what did you, you know, if, if you come into you know, the kitchen, you know, in, in rural Mexico, 50 years ago, and say, abuela, I just had this dream. They're like, oh, shut up, that's just your unconscious projections of your unresolved issues with your mother, have your cereal, right? No, they say, they say what, what did grandfather say to you? Oh, let's act on that, right? So how did we end up in this monophasic culture? Well, you know, you wind back the clock, you know, and blame it on the French, right? So, so the Enlightenment, Descartes, right? Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. Give me five senses, give me ration, reason, and empiricism. Right? Let's get rid of superstition. Let's get rid of all of those things, and let's create right, this rational, binary, logical world. And it worked beautifully. I mean, let's give full credit. We would not be here in a climate-controlled, high-tech <laughs> building, community, city. We wouldn't be able to do any of the things that we do without that rational, binary, logical, prefrontal cortical self. So, so let's you know, give it up for the PFC, okay? But, right, not, we never built an off switch. We forgot to build an off switch. And Mark Leary at Duke, who wrote, who wrote a book called The Curse of Self, literally describes that pernicious problem. We turned on this hyper self-aware, always on hamster wheel mind of ours. And particularly is that how it's now intersected with this information ridiculous superhighway where we all just get flattened on a daily basis. It's killing us. So the possibility is uh, what's happened to our dial and is it completely rusted shut, stuck on this one channel? Or do we have the ability uh, uh, to like kind of just rock it loose, lube it up a bit, and regain and reclaim the full spectrum of consciousness and awareness that will allow us to begin taking a crack at the wicked problems that we are all facing and that everyone in this room is, is committed to solving. Never let yourself be the victim. If I could go back in time and have a conversation with my eight to 10 year old self, that would be the message I would give. Because when you think about it, you're a kid, things don't go your way, what do you do? You cry, you whine, you throw a fit, you want your parents to feel sorry for you. You feel sorry for yourself. When you can realize that your worst days were truly your best days. When you can realize that every human being goes through pain and injustice, some more than others, but everyone goes through it. Everyone's had someone be completely unjust to them. Everyone has had someone hurt them who they loved and cared for deeply, or they trusted, or they looked to for support or love. It's part of how we grow spiritually. There's no possibility 
To build muscle without something, you have to lift. And if you don't lift it, it will crush you. And if you lift it, it will be painful. It's not easy to lift those things. But the day in which you finally find inside yourself the story and state that finally makes you no longer be willing to be pressed down by your past, that's the day your life not only changes, but you also now have the ability to give the gift to others. And the most beautiful day, though, is the day when you go, it wasn't for all that that I hated most. I wouldn't have what I love most. Realizing that there was a meaning in all of it and that it served something greater. Greater than just little me. And now they want to throw shade at you, but your shield deflected it. You tell them winning in progress over here. So please eliminate the negative vibe. It's time to remove them from your circle and find yourself a positive tribe. Because misery loves company. But that misery cannot have any of your companionship because everybody on your team is working as a unit to come back and win the championship. Measure your success. Long story short, every day you should wake up with a point to prove. Do you know how many people didn't get the opportunity to wake up this morning, young one? Statistics show 6,316 people die an hour. Again, do you know how many people didn't get the opportunity to wake up this morning, young one? Do you know how many people didn't eat this morning? Humble yourself. When you face opposition, you got to be able to come out of that box. You got to be able to adjust. You got to be able to be the person that you were meant to be. I'm not talking to the people that's not supporting you. I'm not talking to the people that's not in your corner, that's standing up and clapping, or the people that's telling you and pushing you and telling you that you can do it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the person that you look at in the mirror because the only competition is you. The only person you can truly blame is you because you are the only person who can get yourself out of it. Live life a victor, not a victim. You say, why me? You should say, try me. Greatness is your destiny. But at times you must reboot your mental computer because every step you take today will directly affect your future.